大家晚上好，欢迎观看第十一期《海怡讲坛》。今天的主题是拜登政府的对外政策和中美经贸关系预测。今天呢，我们非常荣幸的邀请到美国东西方中心前主席、太平洋经济合作理事会前主席、亚太地区著名的国际关系学者查理斯·查尔斯·摩尔森先生。那我们请查尔斯·摩尔森先生给大家打个招呼。Mr. Morrison, can you say hello to our audience? Yeah, thank you. Hello. Very nice to see everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Charles Morrison 先生呢，他是目前呢，他是亚太地区的著名的国际关系学者。那目前呢，也是这个美国东西方中心的资深研究员。他是一九九八年到呃二零一八年担任美国东西方中心的主席，二零零五年到二零一二年担任太平洋经济合作理事会的呃主席。那么我们呃我们知道呢，这个美国的新一届总统 Joe Biden， 呃一月二十号，也就是前天刚刚举行的总统的就职典礼，成为美国了美国的第四十六届总统。那在过去的四年中呢，美国和世界各国的关系，特别是中美关系，有没有有目共睹？那么我们呢，就首先呢，我就想问问这个呃 ，Morrison 先生，呃，就说这个现在美国的新一届的总统 Joe Biden， 您觉得怎么样？您认为这个特朗普和拜登他们俩的根本区别是什么？Uh, uh, Mr. Morrison, I just uh, have a brief introduction to yourself and uh, your East-West Center and the Pacific Economic Cooperation Council. So then we come to our major uh, topic talk about we know uh, His Excellency Mr. Joe Biden just had a uh, inauguration on the, you know, the day before on the 20th of January. So just uh, two days later, we are here to talk about uh, the new uh, uh, Biden's uh, administration. So what do you think the differences between uh, Mr. Joe Biden and uh, Mr. Donald Trump? Please. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Lucy, for that question. And I want to uh, greet all the friends at, uh, at the uh, Beijing Foreign Studies University, the Haiyi Institute, and uh, also the China PEC. It's, uh, it's great to be with friends. Uh, it's a new beginning in the United States. So um, the differences between uh, Mr. Biden and Mr. Trump are, um, are very great. Um, and and they start with the uh, the basic background. Um, Joe Biden comes from a middle class family, and he studied law, and uh, he uh, went into politics very young. Became a senator at age thirty. I first met him at at that time. Uh, Mr. Trump um, uh, came from a very privileged background. Uh, he um, uh, studied uh, business and economics, uh, and and he's a businessman. So I think um, those differences um, affect how they view the world. Please.非常感谢能够邀请我来参加，我在这里也见到了我的很多好朋友，呃，非常感谢。然后这次对于美国来说是一个全新的开始，而对于拜登和特朗普呢，我想说他们两人的区别是非常大的。首先是谈到背景，
And that affects um, how uh, individuals look at institutions. Uh, Mr. Biden, um, uh, as a lawyer and as a politician, I think respects institutions, respects the uh, domestic rule of law, the Constitution, respects law in the international sphere. And he sees it as the parameters or the limits in which um, political action uh, and policy takes place. Mr. Trump, however, um, uh, was very transactional, uh, this for that. So uh, he uh, understands law as something he might use for his own interest, but um, he did not appreciate the institutional uh, context. And that was true both domestically where he tried to ignore the Constitution after he lost the election and to find some way around it to uh, continue to be in office. That didn't work. But it also happened internationally that um, he simply uh, didn't want to work within the institutional structures and wanted the United States to move unilaterally on, on many issues. Uh, please. So, this has affected the two of Tarangwei, 在国内，他不尊重宪法，他不承认自己选举失败，并且试图找到各种方式来去推翻它。当然，他并没有成功。而在国际上来讲，他也在不断的退群，希望美国可以以一种单边的行径来开展行动。So what I think this uh, means for foreign policy is um, again that uh, the Mr. Biden will be institution driven. He'll be much more interested in the international architecture, whether it's the U.S. alliance structure, whether it's the U.N., Paris Agreement, or um, the APEC uh, process. Um, and, and that takes place, takes the place of uh, Mr. Trump, who was uh, very much driven by his own personality needs and also by his political uh, interests. Um, uh, first. So I think it'll be a very, a much more predictable kind of foreign policy, much more institutional foreign policy, and much easier for um, other countries, including China, to deal with the United States, even if um, uh, there's still many issues that will be hard to resolve. Please. So 在外交政策方面呢总把这些摆在他思考的首位那么展望未来可能美国的外交政策就会变得更加可预测而且也更加注重多边体制对于中国和其他国家来说可能美国未来的政策是会更容易去推断的 yeah. Uh, do you think uh, uh, Biden administration, what is their priority? Yes. 
Uh, well, thank you for that. And um, let me just say one thing before I answer that question directly. I, I think there's a tendency for people in China perhaps to think that uh, Mr. Biden is the equivalent of uh, Chairman Xi. Um, and we Americans also think Mr. Xi is a equivalent of our president. But the two systems are very different. And the U.S. system, um, we both had revolutions, but the American Revolution was a revolution against uh, power, against centralized power. And uh, so the designers of the U.S. Constitution divided government power any way they could think of. So we have three branches of government that check and balance each other. And our Congress has two bodies, which have pretty much the equivalent power. And we have the states, and we have the federal government. Um, and then we have the limits on how long a president can serve. So all of those things have been institutional checks on the president's power. Mr. Trump didn't appreciate those checks. And again, he wanted to get around them in some way. And he wanted to be have the same power that he thought strong leaders in the world had, like Chairman Xi. But in the U.S., whoever is the president is going to be checked by the Congress, uh, is going to be restrained by um, uh, the court system, and is going to be concerned about the next election. So what a president can do is often very different <laughs> from what they would like to do. Uh, because of these uh, political uh, constraints on them. Please. In回答这个问题之前,我想先说一点,就是 我想现在很多中国人可能都认为拜登非常适合当我们的总统,就像我们很多美国人也认为习主席非常适合当中国的领导人。美国和中国的 体制中都有不同的改革 他们都使得权力可以得以分开，并且相互制约。而特朗普他并不喜欢这一点，并且试图摆开这些束缚。他希望自己可以拥有和习主席一样大的权力。但是在美国，每个领导人都是需要接受这样的制衡，需要接受来
So that's his second uh, uh, agenda item and, and one he feels about very uh, strongly. And the third is climate change. And that I think he regards as, an, we could say, existential threat. It's a threat to our survival as people, no matter what country we live in. And so he feels very strong action needs to be taken in that area. And then the fourth area, which I think is an area of very deep personal interest to him, is restoring U.S. leadership in the world. Please. Rahu 这也就意味着相当于中国会有一点五万的人每天因为新冠肺炎死亡，所以这是一个非常惊人的数字，而且新冠疫情也导致了我们的经济产生了非常大的衰退现象。所以这将会是他的首要工作重点。第二个工作重
And in the process, he made many visits overseas. Um, he's probably met almost every world leader. Uh, the last time I saw him was uh, five years ago, and that was when uh, Chairman Xi was in Washington, and there was a lunch at the State Department and uh, in Chairman Xi's off honor, and uh, Biden was uh, there at that. So, you know, he just has um, a great deal of experience and know-how and, uh, and interest. And one of the reflections of that is the people that he's chosen for uh, – senior positions in his administration. Tony Blinken, who's the new Secretary of State, is someone who's been with him a very long time uh, in several different capacities, and someone that he deeply trusts. Now, Mr. Trump didn't trust anyone. Uh, he had two Secretaries of State. He had four National Security <laughs> Council yeah. uh, uh, Chief of Staffs, but uh, directors. But... Um, uh, Mr. Biden, I think, is likely to have only one Secretary of State, and he'll probably have only one National Security Director, and that's Jake Sullivan, who's somebody that he met later, but in the Obama administration, and again, uh, very much uh, uh, trust. So Biden has a very deep staff, a, a very uh, professional staff in foreign relations, and he himself is very um, uh, deeply uh immersed in the in the issues. I think if it weren't for the pandemic and the race riots, probably foreign policy would be his greatest interest right now. Yeah. But the other yeah. issues uh, come first for understandable reasons. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Please. I think Biden has a very interesting interest in foreign policy, and he is also 呃，对我们来说最做好准备的这样的一个总统，呃，布什他之前也对呃外交政策有很大的有很大的改善，因为他之前在中情局有过一些工作经验。而对于拜登本身呢，他自己长期从事外交事业，他虽然没有非常显赫的家庭背景，但是他在非常年轻的时候就先进入了县议会工作，然后又长期在这个。参议院的外交委员会工作，他也长期担任参议院议事，他几乎见过世界上每一个重要的领导人。我上次见他的时候还是五年之前，那个时候习主席也在华盛顿，有一个午餐会，我们在那次进行了进行了见面。对于拜登来说，他是一个有着非常丰富外交经验的人，他也知道自己应该如何去开展工作。比如说，他这次选拔了托呃，选拔了布林肯作为他的国务卿，他与布林肯有着非常良好的关系，而且他也非常信任他。特朗普呢，他是不信任任何一个人，像他自己有两任的国务卿，其他的官员也是换了又换。拜登，我想他应该只会有一个国务卿，其他的官员也不会怎么换。他有一个非常专业的团队来帮他处理外交事务，当然他自己也是这方面的专家。我认为，除了疫情和种族不平等以外，现在外交会是拜登最关注的工作重点了。谢谢。呃，我们看到，呃，拜登的团队呢，他，呃，他是聘请了这个。就是前总统奥巴马的幕僚以及他的专业的团队。那么，他这个拜登的政策会不会回归到奥巴马的这个政策呢？啊、uh, ，I'm just asking. Uh, you know, we have seen uh Biden's uh team, professional team, and he he's appointed uh most of the uh staff. From the former Obama's uh, administration staff, so is, is it means uh, Biden's uh, some of the policies will be back to or let's say follow follow Obama's policies. Mm -hmm. What what well, would you think? Yeah, I think the uh, the outlook is um, is is similar. Uh, as I said before, the orientation toward institutions. Uh, you'll hear a lot, again, the word uh, rule by law as an interest of the administration uh, in foreign policy. Um, and I think the uh, interest that uh, President Obama had in uh, multinational 
organizations will even be increased by um, by President Biden. But um, it won't be exactly the same. And there's at least three reasons. Um, first, it is a different president. Mr. Biden does have some different uh, interests. Uh, Mr. Obama, I think, was did partly because of his early background in Indonesia. He had a lot of interest in Asia. Uh, Mr. Biden, I think, is more interested in the Middle East, uh, uh, more interested in Europe, maybe a little less interested in Asia. Uh, second reason, of course, is that the times are different. Things have changed in the last five years, and the public mood has changed. Uh, in some ways as well. And so he's dealing with a different set of issues than Obama uh, did. And the third reason is that um, we do have a legacy still from Mr. Trump. Um, not all the things that Mr. Trump did were considered bad. Some of them have been considered good. And uh, uh, Mr. Biden's people, as they've been uh, had their hearings before the, the Senate, have um, indicated that they would be pursuing some of the lines that uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Trump uh, had uh, had taken, including uh, some aspects of U.S.-China relations. Yeah. Please. Please. 我想情况可能是会跟奥巴马当时有所相似，比如说他们可能。都会对国际机构非常看重，他们也会把国际法治作为外交政策的一个非常重要的方面。像奥巴马，他就非常注重各种国际组织，拜登也是如此。但是总的来说，两个人还是会有许多的不同，这也是主要由三个原因导致的。一个是拜登，他拜登和奥巴马的个人兴趣可能不一样。像奥巴马，他因为之前在印尼有过工作经历，所以可能他会对亚洲更感兴趣；而拜登他自己是对中东和欧洲更感兴趣，可能对亚洲的兴趣并没有那么大。第二个原因就是现在时代也已经不同了，现在已经过去五年了，他们现在所处理的也也是不同的事情，面对的是一个不一样的世界。第三个原因就是特朗普的一些政治遗留，特朗普所做的。所所做的事情并不全都是坏的，也有一些是可以借鉴沿用的，包括之前在听证会上就有人谈到这一点，可能就是在中美关系上，拜登也还是会延续特朗普的一些做法，同时也做出他自己的改良。谢谢。那我们现在回到这个，我们谈重点谈这个中美关系啊，因为我们想知道呢，就是在呃，大家肯定是都有这个期待，呃，就是新一届的这个总统，呃，中美关系对于拜登政府呃到底有多重要？另外呢，我们想问一下呢，这个就是在拜登政府的他的对外政策里面，他的重点是在哪里啊？呃呃、uh, ，Mr. Morrison, we are uh, all uh, very concerned about the new Biden administration, their foreign policy, and how important for you know the China um the America relationship, how important in his foreign policy, and what is the important point in Biden's uh, foreign policy, how how is yeah. formulated? Yes. Yeah. Please. Well, uh, thank you very much for that uh, question, uh, Lucy. And actually, it's kind of hard to say at this point uh, yeah. because it's only the second day. <laughs> yeah, yes, I know. But just a very <laughs> focus in general, general right, focusing. I know. Yeah. Sure. But I just say um, that uh, China will be very important in the U.S. foreign policy because there's nothing that uh, can be done to resolve global issues, whether it's climate change, whether it's uh, new trade rules, whether it's uh, strengthening the world health system, nothing can be resolved without China. So the United States needs to cooperate with China, needs to try to work with China, and it needs to negotiate with China, not just on US-China issues, but on all kinds of global and 
and Asia Pacific uh, issues. So I think that China will have a very great importance. And one thing Mr. Biden has done that's a little different from uh, any previous president is to create a special position, which is a coordinator for uh, Asia Pacific or Indo Pacific, I guess they call it now, affairs in the National Security Council. This is Kurt Campbell, who played an important role in the first part of the Obama administration. And um, and I th he felt well known in China, of course, and um, and he's a good listener. Um, and he has some uh, uh, views that uh, he's made known publicly about trying to develop a um, a healthy regional order for um, the Asia Pacific region, and it's based on um, on three aspects. Uh, the first aspect is um, uh, having a stable balance of power, so there isn't one power that sort of dominates everything. And the second is the he calls it the legit legitimacy of the international order. So all countries have to feel that um, the rules are fair, not yeah. favoring one side or another side. But the third is to deal with countries that are kind of problems. And the problems tend to be the big countries. And he identifies two as problems. And one is China, and the other <laughs> is the United States under Trump. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he, he believes in also, the multi-national means as a way of balancing. And I think that's actually true, that um, when one country or another gets too far out of line, so to speak, that uh, there's a natural tendency by other countries, including lots of smaller countries, to try to bring it back into um, equilibrium. Please. Yeah. Wishan 所以美国需要与中国合作需要与中国协商他自己可能会把自己定位为一个像亚太或印太地区的这样的一个协同者第二点就是要追求国际秩序的合理性uh, so, you know, if I could continue just a little bit, um, I think there is a tendency for the Americans to always think of some other country as being sort of the equal or being the challenger to the United States. And when I was growing up, that country was Russia, or then the Soviet Union. And then in the 1980s and 1990s, American attention turned to Japan as a rising power. And um, and since the end of the 1990s and in, in, in this century, uh, the attention has been focused on China. And the good part about that is that 
the attention is focused on China. So there's a lot of interest in China. The bad part is that China kind of stands for the, in the American mind, for the kind of problems of the world. And the relationship gets kind of politicized. And so it's a, it, it becomes a much more difficult um, relationship to uh, pursue. Now, uh, one American political scientist has kind of brought attention to this, and he talks about the so-called Thucydides trap. And most Americans have no idea who Thucydides was. And I'm sure President Trump never heard of Thucydides. But I heard uh, at that lunch I had mentioned that uh, Chairman Xi spoke at. He mentioned the Thucydides trap. And he pronounced it, since I don't understand Chinese, I didn't know what he was saying, except I couldn't understand Thucydides. So he, yeah. he even pronounced it quite well. Oh, yes. <laughs> but um, but uh, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more, but maybe I should break for the translation now. Yeah. Please. 在进行下一个问题之前我想再谈一点 好处就是美国确实是开始注意到中国了，因为而且中国也有很多的共同利益。但是不好的地方呢，就是现在中国在美国人的一些想法中可能是带有一些负面的色彩，而中美关系也被政治化了，所以我们的关系也很难再继续推
actions on energy and climate change, where we can destroy the planet and ourselves through nuclear war. So the issues, the stakes become much greater, even though the uh, dynamics of human nature remain the same. So technology changes, but people don't change nearly as fast. Please. 就是西底德，他是生活在孔跟孔子生活在一个年代，而且当时他们面临着长达三十年的战争。当时是雅典城和斯巴达开有有这样长达三十年的战争。斯巴达担心雅典会崛起，危害到他的地位。哈佛的一个学者名叫艾利森，他就提出了这个修昔底德陷阱的概念。他谈到历史上崛起大国和守城大国之间必然会发生。各种各样的冲突，但是我想，现在我们处于一个有核时代，所以这种现象可能不太可能会发生。我后来又去看了修昔底德的这个概念，我也找到了两个其他的陷阱。我想这对我们来说也是很重要的。一个就是在在当时雅典和斯巴达两个强大的力量，他们都破坏了当时的规则。实际上，当时希腊是有一些规则的，有习俗，他们也有一些联盟等等。而当这个，而当两个最强大的力量都开始破坏规则的时候，规则就不复存在了。所以这也告诫我们，都要遵循现在的规则。第二个就是，虽然科技在不断的改变，时代在发展，但是人的本质也还是没有任何的变化。在之前，斯巴达和。雅典发生战争时，在战争的刚开始，两个地区的人民都认为自己的国家会胜利，之后的生活会很美好。但是在古代，人们只能互相伤害彼此，杀掉彼此。而在今天，我们是，我们却可以毁了整个地球，因为我们已经是一个有核的时代了。这也就意味着我们面临的挑战是会更多。OK， 所以 OK， 所以所以我我们这个生活在一个这个时代，科技先进了，其实我们的恐惧就更加剧了。所以我也想呢，还回到这个中美关系来讲，呃，因为呢，如果我们这个新新一届总统拜登政府，他如果希望可以修复呃中美关系的话，那您认为在中美关系中？呃，因为我们中国有一句话叫“求同存异”，对吧？我们要从呃简单的开始，呃，哪哪部分比较容易可以，呃，这个我们先开始合作，哪部分呢？呃，是比较困难的方面啊。Uh, Mr. Morrison, we just uh, uh, talk about you know you just talk about the high technology uh, actually bring our life to be. Uh, Uh, high quality, but however, the other side is straightness. You know, they can destroy uh, suddenly uh, to everything. So that's why we uh, come back to our China and America relationship. Uh, we know there's a lot of uh, uh, disagreement, argument even. But uh, what do you think? Of where, where in China we have a say? Uh, we can live, we can discuss and go along with the common uh, part area and we leave the differences for further discussion. Then wh what do you think, where is the easiest uh, area to solve, solve it priority? Then uh, what is the difficulties? Uh, then we can leave it for uh, uh, further discussion. Yeah. yeah, I know we're uh, getting... Um toward the end of our time, and I've talked too long already. Yeah. But uh, uh, let, me, let me just say that um, I absolutely agree. Uh, yeah. We need to have a, a different approach, and um, we need to be able to talk to each other um, agreeably. So yes. um, even where we have differences, we need to be able to talk about those differences without demonizing the other side. And that's particularly true of our government officials. You know, because the U.S. has um, the uh, kind of media and free speech uh, uh, guarantees that we have, there's no way we can stop a politician or a newspaper uh, or an NGO leader from saying something. 
But a government official shouldn't be saying things that are um, undiplomatic and rude. Um, and uh, hopefully that's on both sides. The easy things, I think, are the areas where we have common interests. Mr. Biden is very interested in climate change. China is very interested in climate change. We should be able to work in that area. Um, I think on the um, on the health situation, even though there are some people who want to go back and through history and blame one side or the other, the important thing is to work together on the future so we don't have this kind of disease. Uh, it was so destructive of, of so much of the world economy. So, um, so I think we need to strengthen our international institutions, and that's a area of, of common concern that we can talk about. Hardest issues are going to be the human rights issues, and they're hard because, from a Chinese point of view, I think China thinks that the U.S. is intervening in internal affairs. But from the American view, point of view, we think that China is violating international laws and agreements that it's already um, signed on to and agreed to. There's sort of very deep cultural issues involved in all that. It goes back to the roots of our separate civilizations. But in any case, we need to quietly talk about those issues and try to um, uh, reduce misunderstanding and also to try to figure out win-win situations so that they don't uh, hurt our uh, relationship. Okay. Please. Apart from apart from uh, human rights, and what what is the other area for the most difficulties area? Um, you know, technology might be a, a difficult area because trade issues. You can you can resolve. It's really um, a question of uh, economic interest, and there's always going to be some way that you can compromise and slice between them. But technology, the fear that countries have of some other country um, exceeding it in technology and not sharing technology, that is a is a very can be a very deeply emotional issue. So that I think is going to be a difficult one. Uh, as well. And then uh, clearly um, the Taiwan issue is always there. I don't think it has to be, but, um, but uh, and I hope there will, there will be some changes in our approaches that will make it uh, to kind of go back to the way it, it was 10 years ago. Um, but in any case, um, that's uh, clearly an issue for the future. Um, North Korea may be one that, uh, again, um, U.S. and China have some agreements on, even though there are other areas that, about it that are difficult. Yeah. Please. Please. I agree. We should take some different ways to solve these issues. We need to 然后来去解决我们现在的分歧比较容易开展工作的领域因为中国会认为美国在干预它的内政国家之间可能会担心他国科技领先 
，所以我想说，我自己希望我们在沟通的方法上可以有所改变，最好可以回到十年之前的样子。嗯。呃，刚才您提到，呃，这个台湾问题也是中美之间的一个比较难解决的问题。那我们正好呢，呃，我们线上有一个观众就正好问到这个问题，所以我想把这个问题呢，这个放在这个您您说的这个问题下面，就是拜登政府他对台湾问题比这个特朗普政府，呃，会不会有较大的变化？ Uh, Mr. Morrison, you just talk about uh, one of the difficulties issue uh, between China and America is about Taiwan matter. So uh, I, I just uh, received a question from online audience. Uh, one of the audience just asked uh, how is it Biden administration will be uh, will have any changes or improvement uh, treated to Taiwan matter. Uh, compared to Trump uh, administration? Yeah, it's very hard for me to say, and, and uh, obviously I, I don't know. Um, I think, though, the um, direction of the Biden administration will be different. I think, especially in the last, uh, even just in the last several months, uh, especially the last month, <laughs> yes. the, um, uh, the the purpose of some of what the Trump administration people were doing was to annoy China. Um, Biden wants to work with China on issues like climate change, so I yeah. don't think he his administration will have that um, uh, uh, desire at all. Yeah. So I think uh, Taiwan is an example where I believe both sides need to kind of tone down uh, the rhetoric, um, and 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 we just need to talk to each other more privately um, mm -hmm. and not try to make demonstrations like uh, sending some high level U.S. official to Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> or threatening war with Taiwan or something yeah, like that. Uh, you know? <laughs> it's kind of uh, yeah. international. Uh, it, that doesn't help anyone. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. It, yeah. Doesn't, it, it doesn't help Taiwan either. So. <laughs> yeah, yes, it, it's make uh, them and, and everybody just uh, have yeah. a little bit uh, yeah. rumors talking about uh, all these matters. Yeah. Okay, please. 啊，谢子翻译一下。我想我很难说，因为我确实不知道。但是我想，呃，拜登在处理台湾问题的方向上肯定是会与特朗普有不同。像上个月的时候，特朗普政府所做的一切工作，就是想要激怒中国。但是
meeting process of, of doing that that is not confrontational generally um, because part of the purpose of the dialogue is to talk about what you can do together. But the other thing I think that we need, and um, it's a little difficult because of the differences in our system, but I can remember when uh, U.S. and Japan had also very bad problems in their economic relationships. And I, uh, the uh, Carter administration and then later the Reagan administration each had a commission of uh, private citizens in business, in academia, in other fields, but outside the governments to talk about um, these issues and to write a report, trying to narrow the differences. And part of the reason was just to um, delay doing anything, <laughs> say yeah. we have a commission yeah. so we don't have to do anything <laughs> bad. But um, part of the re reason is because we realize that people in private capacities can talk to each other more effectively than they can in uh, government to government talk sometimes. That's the reason we have PEC, because in PEC, there's no problem between the Chinese committee and the U.S. committee. We can talk very freely with each other. We are yeah. close friends. We have joint projects. And so this kind of way of doing things that is, we call it second track, or maybe it's a one and a half track, but it's outside the formal government process, but it allows yeah. us to more freely discuss and explore issues, but still being very frank and blunt about the problems that we we face, because we face them together. Um, and we face them with groups in our societies that have their own interests that are often couched in nationalism, America first or China first, but mm -hmm. uh, really patriotic because they don't help us in our overall relationships with the world. Please.这是很好的 第二点可能有一点难，因为这也是中美两方的有一些文化背景和体制机制有所不同。但是我想，呃，像像张像之前美日之间的经济关系也不太好，不认卡特总统和日本的政府就开展了一些行动，比如说像促进民间的对话等等
呃的前主席，就是我在开始的时候也介绍过了。这个 PECC 这个太平洋经合理事会呢，它的主要的作用就是作为各个国家的这个二轨外交，作为中国 PECC， 也就是在外交部下面的这个中国 PECC， 它是作为叫二轨外交，就是无论就是呃政治上呃这个两个国家怎么样，然后这个因为现在 PEC 的国家有呃这个。国际组织有二十五个成员国，在二十五个成员国里面呢，呃，大家都是有共同的做项目的，共同的合作一些项目，所以呢，也也是叫经济外交、二轨外交、民间外交来帮助呃政治政治外交。所以我们我我最后一个问题呢，呃，也想问这个 Morrison 先生，就是这个呃。要让他来预测一下，呃，就是拜登四年，他任职四年期满以后，预测一下那个时候的中美关系会是怎么样？那么中美的经贸关系会是怎么样？呃、uh, ，Mr. Morrison, you just talk about PCC, PAC. I just a brief introduce to to our audience. Uh, what what is the mission of PAC? Uh, no matter, uh, there's uh, differences. Be, uh, for the political level and the government level uh, between two countries, but the PAC, the 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 uh, the uh, mission is for we call second track. You call 1.5 track. Uh, we we still cooperate with the we call economic diplomacy or uh, mm -hmm. civil uh, people's diplomacy still in this uh, second uh, uh, track level for the cooperation mm -hmm. each other. So may I uh, let you just uh, give us uh, your thought on the focus on after the Biden administration, uh, his term expired after four years uh, later, and what is the what will be the relations between China and America, and uh, what is the economic uh, economic relations between China and America? That is the <laughs> last question. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, you know, it's hard to say. Um, <laughs> I obviously hope that uh, our economic relations go back to normal. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah normal. we all hope so. <laughs> but I think it's going to be hard, uh, and um, and and I I think there's many reasons for that that I I can't go into. But I would just say that. Um, that clearly there's going to have to be actions on both the U.S. side and the Chinese side to be able to reset the relations uh, mm. in a good way, and I I hope that um, that that there's I I really do think there's an opportunity now new administration new people to work with people that you already know so um, so hopefully um, there'll be kind of signals. Back and forth, and uh, yeah. uh, we'll have a meeting of the presidents when they can travel without getting sick <laughs> <laughs> again. But uh, but uh, hopefully uh, virtual meetings. There are some things that I know that uh, the rest of the world doesn't want, and one of the things they don't want is U.S. and China condominium or a G two where we get together and we tell the rest of the world what to do. That's a popular idea with some people, but um, it's not going to work uh, these days because it's a much more diversified uh, world. And even as strong as China and the U.S. would be together, we can't control the world. And the second thing they don't want us to do is to get into fights with each other because the whole world suffers no. when the U.S. and China get into fights. So mm -hmm. somehow we have to have a different kind of relationship, one that is uh we hope very much cooperative um but uh cooperative being with ourselves but also acceptable to the rest of the world as a um as a as a, as a structure for international relations please please mm. 我们的经济可能是，呃，我我我自己个人是希望我们的经济是可以回到之前的这种正常状态，但是这可能也很难达到，原因也是有很多的。但是我想，我希望中美两国可以通过一些良好的方式来重启，或者是重新恢复两国之间的关系
。我想我们目前还是会看到眼前有许多的机遇，因为我们有一个新的政府上台，有新的这种政客在为我们工作。我希望，所以我希望就是双方可以，呃，来去尽快的重启两国之间的关系。当然，我也想提到一点，就是除了两国之外的其他国家，可能他们不想看到的有两件事情，一个就是中美两国变得非常强大，成为世界的呃一个最强大的部分。当然，除此之外，第二点，他们也不愿意看到中中美两国进行对抗，因为这样的话，其他的国家也会承受这种对抗的关系。我们应该去寻找一种不同的。或者说比较与以往不同的这种双边关系，就是要展开合作，而且这种合作不仅是两国间的，也是要把世界上其他国家都纳入其中的，这样才有益于我们国际社会和国际关系的发展。好，那。呃，今天我的采访的这一部分呢，就呃就到这里，呃，然后我们呢再次感谢 Morrison 先生，呃，今天因为呢，呃 ，Morrison 先生他是在霍努鲁鲁，就是夏威夷的霍努鲁鲁，呃，跟我们是晚十八个小时，我们现在呢是北京时间九点十分，大家知道霍努鲁鲁的时间是是几点吗？那个现在呃，夏威夷的时间是凌晨三点。所以我们非常感谢 Morrison 先生凌晨三点在夏威夷为我们解解读这个中美呃这个友好关系的问题，所以这也都是我们民间的中美人民之间的一个期待，大家都是在这样的贡献啊、呃！你看啊、呃、，Mr. Morrison， thank you so much for today's、uh, your very good uh uh you know explain to our audience how. You know those.、Uh, I just talked to them. Now、uh, in Beijing time, we are nine,、uh, nine, nine o'clock in the evening. But in Hawaii time, you are in the early morning of、uh, three o'clock in the early morning. So it it shows the two countries, people, we are here. Talking about China America, the coming relationship, it, it is our、uh, uh, very much、uh, expectation. And you see our audience. When I say、uh, you are in the early morning, three o'clock, in our audience, a lot of their appreci appreciation to you. Thank you. Yeah, very much. You know, there's a lot of coming. Say, appreciate very much. Appreciate、uh, for 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 you to give us uh, our uh, audience uh, such a very clear uh, uh, analysis. Shay, Shay. <laughs> Thank I, you so I, much. I appreciate being with you. I think it's very important to continue with these. Kind of yeah, thank you. 谢谢谢谢，呃，摩尔森说他也非常感谢大家，然后也希望呃继续我们这个友谊。那我们现在呢，就留这个十分钟的时间来呃这个解答网上的问题。呃，其中一个问题呢是关于这个，我点一下啊，关于区域合作问题，拜登政府会继续特朗普政府的印太战略来取代亚太战略吗？呃，因为这个坎贝尔大使呢被任命为印太事务的负责人，而不是亚太事务的负责人，这个似乎说明了呢，这个政策会继续。相关的问题，美国会回到 CPTPP 吗？啊、uh, ，Mr. Morrison，、mm -hmm. y e a h one of the question from from audience says、uh, regarding、uh, regional cooperation. Uh. Did、uh, will the Biden administration will continue、uh, Trump's administration's strategy for replace the Asia Pacific strategic with the Indo Pacific? Because the appointment of Ambassador Kurt Campbell、uh, as head of the Indo Pacific Affairs rather than Asia Pacific Affairs, it seems、uh, Biden administration will will. Follow this, uh, uh, continue the strategy to Indo-Pacific.、Uh, is it America, U.S., uh, uh, United States will re re return to CPTPP? 
Um, yeah, I, uh, of course I know who's asked that question. <laughs> but, <laughs> it, it is uh, your yeah. good colleague. <laughs> yeah, my colleague, good friend. Sarui. <laughs> yeah, Sarui, but, yes, yeah. But I, I think we shouldn't pay too much attention to the name. Uh, eventually it may change back again, but for the moment I think it's very hard to change it. Uh, I, you know, uh, here we have what's called now the Indo-Pacific Command. It used to be called the Pacific Command, but okay. the, they love it because uh, their command uh, covers two oceans, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. So they just think of it as, uh, as the whole area that they deal with. The problem with Indo-Pacific is that it, it's only oceans. So it should be Indo-Asia Pacific, <laughs> but I I think at the at the moment that part isn't so important. What it's called, I think what's important is how vigorously the Biden administration pursues cooperation with the APEC uh, economies, the other APEC economies. So that's really Trans-Pacific or Asia Pacific cooperation. And I think what you're going to see is a, a great interest again in the APEC process. I know Kirk Campbell himself has a very strong uh, interest in it, and um, and he has a very strong belief that the United States needs to be, quote, back after a period of being uh, less engaged internationally. So I, I think um, uh, whether it's called Indo-Pacific or Asia-Pacific, um, the fact is that the APEC process will uh, probably go forward in, um, in 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 U.S. policy in a in a much more vigorous way than it has in the last four years. Okay. 我想我们可能不应该太关注于它的名字到底叫什么。之前我们的这个总管是叫太平洋事务总管，现在变成了印太总管。我想他们可。我想这个主管可能会更加喜欢我们希望看到在一段时间美国脱离亚太之后可以重返亚太，并且促进在这个领域的活动。谢谢，谢谢，Mr. Morrison. Uh,这边还有一个敏感问题，还有一个观众的一个敏感问题。因为最近这几年中澳关系非常紧张uh, Mr. Morrison, there's a sensitive question to you. Um, you know, uh, in recent years, uh, China and Australia relationship uh, and also getting worse and worse, you, you know that. Yeah. But uh, the audience asked uh, ask, uh, how uh, Biden administration, how they treated the America and Australia relationship, and what is the differences uh, between Australia and uh, America, and what is the common uh, uh, between America and Australia? Yeah, well, um, let me say that's uh, a kind of uh, sensitive question for me. Yes, very because, sensitive. Because yeah. the Prime Minister of Australia is named Morrison, 
as well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and he's no relationship, <laughs> has no relationship yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We call this, uh, this Morrison is not that Morrison. <laughs> this one is our good friend. <laughs> But, you know, the relationship between the United States and Australia is very strong and very deep, and it's rooted in common culture, very similar kind of immigrant societies with actually, in both cases, quite a lot of uh, Asian immigrants now. Um, uh, and I think uh, uh, particularly during the Trump period that uh, 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 Prime Minister Morrison got along quite well with uh, with uh, President Trump, but um, but the real difference with the Biden administration is that Biden is very strong on climate change, and Morrison is uh, not at all strong on climate change issues. So there may be some way in which I think the United States will. Um, kind of push Australia in a somewhat different direction on, on that particular issue. Now, one of the reasons that China's relations with Australia has became bad was because uh, Australia wanted an investigation of the Wuhan virus and where it came from in the WHO. Uh, yeah. It wasn't anti-China, not at all anti-China. It was just how we explore the roots of this. But Chinese government took its anti-China. And then the Chinese government did something that is um, about the same as Trump was doing. He, they connected the political issues with the economic issues. And they said, well, because you're doing this, then we don't want to, we might, uh, we sanction your trade. Or we won't have tourists going. Well, tourists aren't going anyway. But Anyway, that's, uh, that created uh, a lot of difficulties, and that's exactly the kind of thing we need to avoid in international affairs, both China and the United States. Trade is dealt with by the WTO, and trade are trade issues, and security issues are dealt with in a different realm, and to connect the two in a transactional way is a mistake that I'm afraid the Obama, or the Trump administration made, and I felt in that particular instance, as well as an earlier instance involving South Korea, also China made. Yes, she's a tiny chap. 美澳之间的关系是非常重要，而且是非常深远的，因为两国都有非常相似的文化根基，两国都是移民社会，而且也有大量的亚洲移民。特朗普他在任时期与莫里森的关系是非常好的，但是拜登可能并不会像他那么好
the the policy for from Trump's administration, the America First, uh, is is it caused a very negative impact to international uh, uh, community? And uh, Biden administration will will also, you know, even he didn't uh, mention about America priority, but still, uh, is it still what well, what is a Biden administration trade? America uh, as a, you know, America <laughs> policy. What, what, what yeah. he concerned about the international image about America. Yeah, well, uh, and we should be concerned not just with the image, but also the policy. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the Trump administration uh, often would um, would have uh, slogans like um, America first. And mm. sometimes they would uh, pursue policies to show that that slogan meant something, but often they didn't uh, manage to pursue their policies very effectively. Um, Biden um, roots are in the, um, his support base and the support base of many democratic politicians Democratic Party politicians is in labor unions. And the labor unions were actually quite strong supporters of America First policies by Trump. And they also uh, uh, encourage um, uh, Biden to um, pursue policies by America policies and, 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 and policies that have to be compatible with the WTO but also go in this direction, kind of uh, in industrial policies that are intended to uh, try to help uh, American uh, workers. So I think you'll continue to see uh, some of the that policy direction, which in, in my own personal belief is not um, necessarily consistent with the best interests uh, of the United States. Um, but the way it will be pursued will be very different and it will be mm -hmm not confrontational, and it will be um, within the context of the WTO uh, system rather than just ignoring it. And, try and of course, the Trump administration even tried to destroy the mm. appellate court uh, system in the WTO. And I'm sure the Biden administration will immediately start to appoint judges again to that appellate court. Please. 我想我们不应该仅关注这个国家的形象工党也总是在喊着美国优先等等，而拜登可能会更加注重于这些国际组织。You know, I maybe should mention something more, which is that um, during the election, uh, Mr. Biden uh, was a very difficult candidate for Mr. Trump to deal with. Mr. Trump wanted to portray Mr. Biden as being a radical socialist. Uh, who would be soft on China, be soft on trade issues, unlike him. Mm -hmm. And the Biden strategy was to be just as tough in the campaign rhetoric as Trump was on China and on trade issues. So they didn't allow any space. Uh, and it was a, uh, politically, it was a very good strategy um, for, for getting elected. What it really means in terms of policy, though, is uh, still a question uh, to be seen. 
当时在选举的时候，拜登是特朗普非常强劲的对手。特朗普，特朗普就是用，就是说拜登对中国太友好，在对美中贸易方面太过柔和。来攻击拜登，所以当时拜登也采取了对华非常强硬的政策，这可能在选举中是非常好的策略，但是在真正开展与对华政策方面，究竟是不是真的这样好？究竟拜登该怎样开展，还是一个问题。好，那啊、呃，没有更多的问题了。那我们今天的海怡讲坛呢，就到这里，因为呃已经拖时间了，但是我觉得呢，呃也是值得的这个时间。呃，我们再次感谢这个 m e r s o n 先生，凌晨现在是凌晨三点，夏威夷时间，然后给我们解读中美关系，然后也感谢呢这个观众大家对海怡智库、海怡讲坛的关注和支持，然后非常感谢大家。呃 ，Mr. Morrison， there's no more questions. Uh, so we. Uh, <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> otherwise, uh, we, uh, I told the audience it's already three o'clock in the early morning in Hawaii time.、Uh, Actually, I have, an, I have another meeting at six o'clock. So <laughs> my goodness, <laughs> it'll be a very short night. <laughs> oh, so take care of. <笑> Good to have you. 呃，我我我我我们相我们相信呢，就是因为拜登他就职以后，肯定是在不远的将来会对我们对中国来进行国事访问。我我我们估计我们习主席也会对美国进行国事访问。呃，期待着在未来这个拜登四年的任期内，我们中美关系，呃，中贸中美的中美经贸关系，这个会会这个非常的这个好。Uh, we we I just talk about、uh, I'm sure uh, uh, very soon shortly time after、uh, Joe Biden administration he is、uh, settle all those uh, 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 internal matters then、uh, one day he must、uh, come to for a visit come to China. And, I'm sure、uh, <laughs> Yeah, and also President C will also have a state visit to America. So we、uh, we all expected,、uh, you know, during four、uh, four years、uh, Biden's term, you know, the China America relationship will be getting into a you know good level, you know, for our relationship.、Mm -hmm. And also one day we、uh, welcome you. To come to China again when it's the you know the pan、uh, pandemic free, <laughs> we will welcome you and also we we can go to、uh, Hawaii to visit you. Indeed,、uh, yeah, <laughs> we're looking forward、Hawaii. to it. We're all、yeah. looking forward to the day when the pandemic will be over, but、uh, it, it will be several more months at least. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 那我们就呃跟大家说再见。We say goodbye to our audience and 谢谢谢谢大家。Thank you so much. Bye bye. bye. Yeah, bye bye. bye. 谢谢 Thank you. Have a good rest.、Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.